Wristwatches usually come fitted with some form of glass to protect your watch dial and allow you to read the time. The question is, which type is best? What are each of these glass types? How do they perform and stack up against one another? Well, here's a quick guide to each type of watch glass to help you understand their general properties and discern which may suit your needs the best. There are three general types of watch glass or crystal out there. Acrylic crystal, mineral crystal, and sapphire crystal. Each has slightly different properties, making them more suitable for different environments, occasions, or functions. Let's begin with acrylic. Sometimes known under the pseudonyms Hesalite, Perspex, or Plexiglass, acrylic crystal is essentially a specialized form of plastic that is then worked and contoured to fit over a watch dial. You'll often find flat pieces of acrylic crystal fitted to extremely low cost watches due to its low retail cost. It really doesn't take a lot of time or money to make a piece of this. This type of glass is also used on a lot of retro designed or retro inspired watches as it can be easily manipulated, allowing watchmakers to create domed glass very easily, creating a nice distortion when looked at from an angle. Overall, some people prefer the look of acrylic while others think it looks cheap. A lot of this video is gonna be subjective and about what you find important. While acrylic glass is very affordable, its softness makes it very susceptible to scratches. Anything sharp will leave a mark. However, it's surprisingly resistant to impacts due to its flexibility. The pseudonyms previously mentioned are certain variants of acrylic glass with marginally different features, but overall they offer very similar performance. So to summarize the pros of this stuff, acrylic has strong impact resistance due to its softness. It can flex somewhat under impact, meaning that it really doesn't shatter that often. Because of its softness, you can also buff out light scratches easily by polishing using some polywatch. I'll link to that stuff in the description below. I've also found that acrylic is quite resistant to fingerprints. And then you've got the obvious benefit of this stuff being really low cost. The cons are also very straightforward. This plastic is very easily scratched and marked. And then over time, if you obtain multiple scratches, it can impair the readability of the dial. This is also considered by some to look cheap and sometimes it can look a little bit cloudy in direct sunlight, though both of those are really a bit more subjective. I think these are best for a couple of different types of watches notably low cost watches, retro inspired watches, kids watches, and also practical dive watches. Essentially situations where your impact resistance matters more than scratch resistance, or where cost is a primary concern. Next we'll look at mineral crystal. Sometimes known under the Seiko pseudonym Hardlex, mineral crystal is a popular choice for many entry level watch brands given its low price point. If you're buying a lower end watch under 100 pounds, chances are it's got a piece of this fitted to it. Mineral glass is created from silica and provides better scratch protection than acrylic crystal, though from my experience still isn't particularly good. This is almost identical to the regular glass that you might have fitted in your windows. And as a result, it has quite similar properties. Mineral crystal is often found on fashion watch brands as it is cheap to manufacture and provides some scratch resistance. The popular Hardlex crystal used by Seiko is a type of hardened mineral crystal that is said to be noticeably harder than regular mineral glass, albeit not as scratch resistant as a sapphire crystal. Though its performance is really based on anecdotal evidence, I'm yet to see a direct comparison test online. And apparently there are also slightly different types of this Hardlex stuff that are available on different watches. Nevertheless, we can basically summarize the performance of mineral glass as follows. For the pros, you've got the big one that this offers a bit more scratch resistance than acrylic glass. And this is also quite impact resistant. Additionally, it's also a bit less reflective than sapphire, which we'll talk about in a moment. In terms of cons, this type of crystal is noticeably less scratch resistant than sapphire. And also, unlike with your acrylic crystal, you can't polish mineral glass. If it gets heavily scratched or damaged, you'll likely have to replace the whole piece of glass and also mineral can chip when impacted. Overall, I think this is best for general purpose, lower end watches. Essentially where sapphire glass is a bit more out of budget, but acrylic might not quite be appropriate. This one's like the middleman, it will offer you a bit of both worlds. Next is sapphire glass. Usually the default choice for higher end watches, to many sapphire is the optimal material when it comes to watch glass. Primarily because it's the hardest crystal available. 
Most sapphire glass found in wristwatches is synthetic sapphire, so it's man-made stuff, rather than the naturally occurring sapphire material that you might be familiar with. As with acrylic, this isn't technically glass, rather transparent crystallized aluminium oxide, usually produced in a laboratory. The big selling point of this stuff is that you will struggle to scratch this with anything apart from a piece of diamond, really. This means that the glass can look pretty much brand new after multiple years of usage. While sapphire performs well against scratches, it is somewhat susceptible to shattering if exposed to heavy impacts. Nevertheless, unless you're wearing a watch in a particularly manual job or plan on dropping your watch onto hard surfaces, it's less important than you may think. Well, apparently sapphire glass is the least shatterproof or impact resistant, but I've just spent the last like four or five minutes with a small hammer and chisel thing trying to smash it and I can't. I think maybe people get a little bit too worried uh, about this, but from my experience here, it still seems pretty solid. I'm yet to personally ever smash a sapphire crystal. So this one is kind of like the opposite of acrylic when it comes to performance. The pros, the, the main one being really the unparalleled scratch resistance. These watches can stay looking amazing for a long time. You've also got the attractive appearance and color. These tend to have a slightly different tinge of color compared to the other two. I also think that these give a very clear view onto the dial as a whole. You don't get the, the cloudiness associated with something like an acrylic crystal. Nevertheless, unless you're really looking for it, it's quite difficult to tell the difference anyway, so that might not be of much importance to you. Now this stuff does have a few cons. Without an anti-reflective coating, it can be highly reflective. Also, these come in at a substantially higher cost compared to acrylic and mineral. And as I previously mentioned, they are prone to shattering under really heavy impacts. Like with mineral, if you had really heavy scratches or damage to the glass, you'd have to replace it. You couldn't just try and buff it out like you can with acrylic. Overall, I think this is best for premium watches, where generally you don't want any scratches. Also, it's suitable for situations where impacts aren't necessarily expected. Outside of those three main types, you may also encounter a couple of other bizarre options. A more recent innovation, sapphire coated mineral glass, seems to be increasing in popularity among micro brands. This is essentially a layer of mineral glass with a sapphire laminate coating on the top. A notable example of this was formerly used by Seiko under the name Saflex. From my experience, this acts as some form of halfway house between mineral and sapphire. It's often marketed as being the best of both. Though I've heard reports of the sapphire layer chipping off or separating from the mineral glass in extreme cases. Thus, I just tend to prefer to go with sapphire glass. It seems that this coating method was initially introduced as a cost-effective alternative to sapphire. Though as the production costs of sapphire decreased, the industry generally moved back towards the regular sapphire, which I think says something about the true performance. Nevertheless, you'll rarely come into contact with this stuff. It has mixed reports online, as does the obscure watch glass Cristerna. That's the name of the crystal used by the Sterling brand and also its subsidiary Acribus. Acribus, I don't know how to say that. Little is known about this material and its performance. Sterling make plenty of bold claims about this, marketing it as the best material for a watch crystal. A primary selling point being that this glass is supposedly more shatter resistant than sapphire crystal, which sounds good at first. Nevertheless, sapphire glass isn't particularly shatter resistant anyway. Therefore, I don't think that really says anything about the quality of Cristerna. Or Christerna. Why do they make these brand names so difficult? This seems to be closest to some form of hardened mineral crystal. A little bit like Hardlex that Seiko use. For the most part, the hype surrounding this just seems to be creative marketing from the brand. So what's my preference on this? If I was looking for a watch, what would I generally go for? Personally, I like to usually go for sapphire glass if possible. To be truthful with you though, I don't think that glass makes a massive difference to a watch. For me, it's more like a, a nice to have feature. I think for most people though, scratch resistance is gonna be of higher priority than impact resistance. You're much more likely to scratch a watch crystal than smash it completely. If I was after a watch specifically for use during physical activity or sports where impacts are far more likely, I might steer a bit more towards something like an acrylic or mineral. Even though the scratches may be frustrating, the impact resistance could come in useful in niche situations. But for general day-to-day -day use, if you're not gonna be doing anything crazy with your watch, Sapphire is probably the way to go. 
If you found this guide useful and want to learn more about low-cost watches, consider subscribing to Ben's Watch Club. I'll see you in the next one.